Can you talk about, Pat, the uh, being involved with this event for, what, three, three, four years now and what it kind of means to you? This is my third year. Um, I got hired just after the, the, this Coaches versus Cancer. So this is year 18 in total. Uh, it means more to me this year, though, um, than ever before. I lost my brother two months ago, March 18th, 2014, uh, to lung cancer. And, uh, you know, we found out about it towards the end of the season. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a very difficult time for all of us. Um, and driving back and forth to Philadelphia and, and just to be there for your brother. So for the first time in my life, I've always had acquaintances, you know, distant, distant cousins, things like that that have been struck by this deadly disease, but now it hit you, it hit you at, at home, uh, when you're one of your older brothers. So um, it's been a trying time, um, but yet a time to reflect on some great memories that I had with him growing up, and to reflect on, um, you know, having fun with it, laughing about it. Uh, I think that's important. Um, I'll mention this today, I saw a study from John Hopkins saying one of the remedies is not only to eat well and things like that and stay in shape, but to laugh, to laugh and have fun and to keep your mind clear of any negativity, of any doubt and, and, and any fear. So I, I think I needed to see something like that, especially going into last night and today. And, and I, feel, uh, I feel like he knows that I'm here for him. I'm putting forth more of an effort. Um, it's unfortunate to say that, but uh, that's where I am today. I'm excited to, to be a big part of this and, and really raise some money and awareness. How about the part where you see all these volunteers putting in so much work for people they may not even know? It could be your brother, it could yeah. be somebody else's mom, it could be whoever. You're exactly right. Um, you know, this isn't, we didn't just throw this together in a week here. This isn't two weeks of like, hey, by the way, let's do this, this, and this. This is a yearly thing. I mean, we, we have events throughout the year, but the committee's meeting, you know, once a quarter, once every two months to put this great event together. That's why this is a premier event. And these volunteers that just want to be a part of it, maybe they can't give their finances, but they give their time, which I think is even more invaluable um, because it's tough to, they've been here since 5 a.m. They were here at five and they're going to be here till, you know, well through six or seven, whatever it is. And then we're all going to go to the Beaver Stadium. I mean, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of effort and the setup. We're not even, we didn't even talk about that. So the volunteers, um, I can't thank them enough for what they're doing. They're a big part of, of what we're trying to do here today. If you don't mind me asking you, what, what your brother's name and how old was he when he passed away? He was 60. His name's Greg, Gregory Michael, um, 60 years old. A lot of life left, a lot of life to, to live. Um, and it was sudden, it came on quick. He thought he was uh, going in for pneumonia, thought he had pneumonia. And next thing you know, uh, you know, after three hospitals, it was much different. And it came on fast and it, and it worked its way through him as quickly as I've ever seen in my entire life. Because obviously I know a ton of stories, but this one was really, uh, really bizarre uh, how quickly it, it all went down. You and DJ have now gone through kind of a similar situation with, with all of that. I mean, has that changed how the two of you have maybe had a relationship, you know, off the court with this kind of stuff, dealing with that both different situations, but really kind of similar in a lot of ways? Yeah, you, you know, as you guys know, DJ and I have a really close relationship. Ever since his mom passed of cancer, um, you know, we, we wanted to be, I wanted to be his father figure. Um, you know, his father lives in Chicago and he really doesn't have anybody here. So we wanted to take him in. Uh, it's definitely brought us closer together. <laughs> Going through something like this isn't easy. Um, sometimes you can't talk about it, but I feel like uh, the relationship that we've, we have now, we can talk about anything. Uh, talk about our feelings, talk about our emotions talk about what we're going through and, and how we can get through it and, and how we can make peace of everything and, and, and understand why. You know, I think that's the biggest question for caregivers is why? You know, we don't understand why. Why is it happening to me? Why is it happening to him? Why is it happening to his wife? Why did it happen to his, DJ and his family? Um, so I think when you have open line of communication like that, it can only be therapeutic and help. Coach, what's it like having a number of the other head coaches on campus out here today? Awesome. Um, spent a lot of time this morning with Coach, uh, uh, Coach Pav, uh, Coop. Coop and I did a little dance on the 14th hole um, because our song, our theme is Happy, you know, uh, by Pharrell, am I saying? Yeah. So, um, you know, I want this to be happy. I want this to be a celebration. I want people to laugh. I want people to have a good time. So to have uh, Coach Thompson I just saw, uh, Bruce Parkhill's back, Barry Parkhill's uh, is here, Jerry Dunn's here, um, Joe Crispin, Danny Earl, John Crispin, like, it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, not only the Penn State coaches, but the support that we're getting from 
generations um, that really want to be a par part of this premier event. It really is. It's a first class event that everybody looks forward to every year. Bruce and Jerry were here at the beginning of the Coaches vs. Yep. Cantor. What kind of respect do you have for, you know, kind of putting this together from the ground? Uh, it started very, very small back in the day. This runs like a well-oiled machine now. I can't even fathom what they went through to get this thing off the ground and to the level it's at now. It's just unbelievable. And uh, I, I talk to Bruce often. I talk to Bruce often throughout the year. So it's not like uh, this is our, we see each other once a year at this point. So I talked to him about this event, but I've talked to him about coaching and knowledge. Jerry and I stay in touch, so it's great that these guys come back. But to get this thing off the ground and to see where it is today, over $2 million, 18th year, I mean, that's pretty amazing um, what these coaches have started. And hopefully I'm just carrying the torch as long as I can to keep it going. I feel more just coming together. Uh, this is Penn State basketball. I, there's a different feel now, and I think everybody's on board and appreciates what we're trying to do. You, you kind of just mentioned this, but you've made it a point to kind of uh, build a culture of, you know, getting the history of the program back to the present and kind of getting that sort of uh, legacy together. I mean, how much different do you think it is today than maybe how it was three years ago or, or what? Um, what? What I would say is we're, we're work, obviously we're working hard. We're, we're, we're trying to get every more people back. And that's a, that's always going to be an annual effort. Every day, every month, every week, we got we got to keep in contact with all these former players and coaches. We want them to come back. We want them to be a part of this. We started a newsletter, a quarterly newsletter, just to just to let them know, hey, this is what's going on. And I think if we just keep ourselves in front of our former alums and former players and coaches, they're going to want to. They're going to want to feel a part of it, and we want them a part of it. I mean, that's our outreach, and I think that will only help our current players because then they'll learn. Okay, hey, let me let me tap into this guy and what he went through in his four or five years, and now what is he doing professionally? Did he go overseas? Did he play in the NBA? What's he doing in his career? As the golf balls continue to drop. <laughs> Does DJ have any camps lined up yet? I know He's at KD at the end of the month. So Kevin Durant uh, at the end of June, and if he plays well there, he'll go to LeBron, which is great. Uh, again, we're getting the respect out there. Two guys on all conference teams. Tim goes to... Duran. Now DJ's going to Kevin Durant. I mean, I see progress in everything we're doing. This is a process. You guys know that. This is a process. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's, I'm in the most impatient person ever. But it's slowly getting to where we want it to be. And Tim's done the Suns and the Knicks so far. Do you know yep. if he's got more lined up? I, I do. I, I, I can't confirm, but I know Boston's up next. I think maybe June 1st or 2nd, so early next week. Uh, I think he's back in Houston now. We t I talked to him after every workout. He feels great. Sounds great. Um, he sounds more confident than he ever has. Um, I thought, you know, but going back to his junior year, he was super confident. I, I hear it in his voice now. Uh, just a different player, a different kid.